Welcome to Laslan Alpaca. This is our fiber studio where we create needle felted projects. We do shawls, rugs, scarves, and everything else in between. We use a felt loom. The, this is the Pro model, 72 inches wide. And it uses the same needles that the hand felters crafters use. The three and a half inch barb needles that would be used for making your little figurines, whatever. The machine has the same but 892 running across the board. And then it has the two rollers here that will pull in the carrying cloth with the fiber laid out on top of it and it will start to needle felt it. So in the first three episodes of webinars, we learned about raising alpacas, shearing them, grading their fiber, clossing their fiber, and then how to spin alpaca fiber. So we follow all of the same things that were discussed in the first two about shearing, grading, classing the fiber and getting it ready to go to the mill. We don't have our fiber spun into yarn. We use three different um, local mills in Ontario. They're all within 100 miles of our ranch. We send them our clean and graded fiber and they turn it into bats for us. So we get it back like this and inside is rolled the, th the thin layers of bats and we make all of our projects from bats or rovings. So when we make something, if we're making something that's lightweight and going to be near skin, we would use grade one fiber. And that's about 20, under 20 microns and that's what this shawl would be made from. If we're making a project that's thicker or heavier using coarser fiber, we would use grade five fiber. How long it takes to run through the machine depends on what you're making. The grade one fiber needs about six runs to go through the machine to get from the bat form into fabric. Um, using grade five fiber, which is about 29 microns, making a rug and it would be on a jute backing it takes anywhere up to a dozen runs to go through. It just depends how thick and how embellished the items are. So we're going to make two shawls today. And we're going to start using, this is a carrying cloth. The felt loom needs to, it needs to start on a carrying cloth. The fiber is too light and fly away that if we tried to run the raw fiber through on its own, it up to get caught around the rollers and jam and break your needles. So we use a carrying cloth to start. So for our project today, we're gonna to do two different gray shawls, but we're gonna start with one square and then turn it into the shawl. So I've outlined roughly the size that we're gonna use for our shawls today. So I'm gonna start, when we lay the fiber out, it has to be crisscrossed in light, airy bats. Oh. It has to be crisscrossed so that the fibers interlock. The barbed needles go through the fiber and that helps lock it. We're just gonna lay this bat out. It doesn't have to be the exact size. Just want it to be roughly same, some parts are thicker, so we thin them out a bit. And that's, so this is going to be a little bit bigger, but that's okay. Then we take the next layer. I went through this just before and separated the layers. It usually doesn't come off quite this neat. So when we line them up side by side, we don't want a huge overlapping. We just sort of fluff the edges out so that they cover, but not bulky. Okay, so now this one is a bit shorter and that's okay. We're just gonna grab um, some scrap fiber bits we have over here. Yeah, it doesn't always come off evenly, so we always keep the bits that don't come off to fill in any little 
spots that miss. And we want the fiber lined up the same way. Okay, that's good. Okay, so now I'm going to come around and do the other side. Because we do it all ourselves, the shearing and the processing grading, we keep any bits of different color in. A lot of people would just make it all gray. This girl has some brown spots in her blanket and we just leave it in. And then when we make our items, the tag will say this shawl was made by Princess Sarah or Princess Emily, whoever it was. So you can see the brown flux there and bits of black. Okay. Okay, so now I don't want this shawl to be too much bigger than my original pattern. So I'm going to lay it down over the pattern. Oh, I want to blend it this way. So, oh, the brown won't show anyways. This is the bottom layer. <laughs> So now I'm just going to carefully run my hand along the mark line and just pull this end edge off. And we'll keep that for any spots that have to be filled in or smoothed out. So depending on how thick your project is, um, how thick your bats are, that will depend on how many layers you need to run through or how many layers you need to lay out to make your project. Usually for a shawl, it's three or four layers. These bats are a bit heavier than what I normally use. So now I'm going to start the next layer. But this time I'm starting at the bottom going the other way. Just get that roughly in the same direction. Now see this is coming up a little bit shorter. And the other one, so that's where my scrap pieces come in. I'm just going to carefully lay that over there. Actually, do it this way. There. Okay, so I'm going to continue layering the shawl out. Um, we're going to cut filming. I'll lay it out and then I'm going to come back and show you what we do when we get ready to run it through the loom. Okay, back in a bit. Welcome back. I've got the shawl laid out. It's three layers thick. I've patched a few spots that I could see were already thin, but I'll check them again later. If you notice on the one side of the shawl here, there's a lot of black fibers going through it. So when it's made, that will become part of the pattern. I'll use that half for the black shawl, the, the gray shawl with black trim. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to run it through the felt loom. Um, there's different speed controls. You can go faster, slower. Um, it'll give you different prints, different needle marks on it, depending on what you're doing. Um, for this, we're just going to run it through on the 
full speed on both the rollers and the needles and that will leave very few needle prints on the fiber. So I'm going to run it through. I'm going to make sure all of this is flat so it doesn't get caught on the rollers. And then after I'm going to take it off, I'll show you how we peel it off and then the next step. Okay, ready? I keep t pushing it through. I want to make sure that it's not going to get caught on the rollers. Keep flattening it. Once it gets through several inches, it starts going better on its own. It feeds through a bit quicker. can see now on this side how much th it's already been felted down. A bit crooked there. Okay, so now I'm going to put it back on the table and I'm going to start peeling it off. But I want you to notice how much thinner it is already with just one run through the felt loom. You can see that block, how it's been pushed through, but it's still there. So what I have to do now is carefully get this off the carrying cloth and just carefully sort of scratch the edges. Uh, I'll have to do the whole thing, which is a little time consuming because you don't want to leave fibers on the carrying cloth. So I'm going to work on that and I will be back in a few minutes and I'll have, it, I'll have flipped it over. I'm going to run it through the second time and then it's going to be um, I'll cut, actually, I'll probably cut it in half and then I'll be ready to embellish it. All right, so we'll see you back in a few minutes. Okay, I've run the bats through the machine twice, peeled it off, turned it over, ran it through, and now I've peeled it off again. I've cut it in half. I have two triangles now for my shawls. So you can see already how much, how well it holds together, just running through the machine twice. It really felt it quick. Now I'm going to use this. I have a light in the table. Put the shawl over it and it will show any thin spots that need to be gently patched. With the, fi the bat, sometimes the fiber just pulls apart. So I'm going to turn the lights off so that you can see looking through it any thin spots that need patching. Just get a bit of fiber ready here. Okay. There. So you can see here a few thin spots. Some of the thin spots are fine. It looks, um, it looks like they're really holes, but they're not. It's just the way the lighting comes through. So I'm just putting a thin piece here over this. This is probably where two of the bats met on the side and they didn't overlap properly. There, so now it doesn't look that much different, but once it's run through the machine, the needles will felt, in, felt it into 
the base part and it will be fine. I'll just turn the light on now. You can see that this, I'm running it the same way as the fiber goes. Okay, so I'm just going to run these through and then I'll be back and I'll show you how we put on our embellishments. Okay, I've checked both of the shawls for any um, thin spots. I've patched them and just using a little bit of fiber. I've run them through the felt loom one more time just to make sure that it's all attached enough that we can now start working on embellishing the shawl. So the first shawl that we're going to embellish is going to have a cherry blossom tree on the back of it uh, with a pink trim across the neck and down the front. So I'm just going to show you quickly how we will lay it out. This piece was the end of a pink bat. So the one end is side is sort of straight that will match up to the cut edge. I really don't do cutting other than splitting it in half. I prefer to have raw rough looking edges on the things that I make for custom orders. I do cut straight if that's what the customer would like. So we're just going to lay that out. Um, so this has only gone through actually three times now. Um, but this part here is now ready to be put on. So we're going to decorate the whole thing, embellish the whole thing, and then we'll start the running it through. So I'm just going to show you quickly how we will do it and then I will do it and I will show you when we're ready to run in the through the felt loom. So the brown pieces that we're using for the tree trunk are scraps from other projects. I don't waste anything and these are also from one of our alpacas. So this is going to be the tree trunk. And then we'll just put little thinner ones for branches up here. Okay, one more. Okay, then we have some brown rovings and we're going to put it over top of, we'll lay it out carefully over top of the brown underneath the yarn. So I'll cover that whole thing properly. And then we have little bits of the pink fluff and pull it off and just put little bits all around to make the tree, so the blossoms on the top of the tree. So before I run this through the felt loom, I'm going to quickly um, do a quick needle felt, hand felt with it, just so that it doesn't lose, change shape or shift when it's going into the felt loom. So it's just enough to barely hold it down. And I'll do that. The top piece is pretty okay. I'm not worried about it really shifting, but for the tree, I will do that. So I'll continue to work on this and when it's done, I'll be right back. Okay, we're ready to start embellishing the um, second shawl and on this one we're going to use bits of black fiber. And this is the shawl that had the black pieces going through on the bats that I pointed out and you can see them here. Um, the whole thing is going to be covered with bits of black. But before I do that, I just want to show you something that's very popular with our items is embellishing them with a silhouette. So this alpaca, um, I make a sheet of black felt, a very thin sheet, thinner than what I would be using for a shawl or vest, any other thing that we would attach it to. And then I have cardboard cutouts I just trace, and then I cut it out and we lay it onto the shawl or the rug, whatever. Just lay it there like that. And then when it goes into the machine, it's going to start here and pull it in this way. So it, we don't want the machine to knock the head out of position. So we would quickly just needle felt 
the whole front side here, the nose and down the neck and down the toe, just enough that it won't shift when the machine, the rollers hit it. And then we would run it through the felt loom about four or five times to make sure that it's going to, to stick. But what we're gonna do with this shawl is I have a bunch of black fiber here that is so fine, the mill returned it to me because it kept breaking on the, th on the spinner and they were having a hard time carding it. And so they returned it to me. Um, and I'm just gonna put little bits of it all over the shawl and no pattern, just randomly. And then with this, I don't bother needle felting it because there's no set pattern. It doesn't matter if it shifts one way or the other. It's just going to have little bits of black all over it. So I will work on that and then I'll show you when we're ready to run it through the felt loom. Okay, I've got the cherry blossom shawl ready to run through. When doing this kind of pattern, it's more apt to shift a little bit. So we'll do it and see what happens. We may have to adjust it. We'll start running it through and see how it looks. Pulling this part so it's not a lot of weight on it, the front part going in. Angle it a little bit. Okay, we're coming to the blossoms to go in now and hopefully they'll all stay. I could have needle hand felted them through first and maybe that's what I should have done, we'll see. Okay, so there's a few spots that definitely need um, more blossoms put back. They shifted. But overall, it's pretty much what I wanted. So now I will patch up those few little spots and I will run this through probably about four or five times to make sure that all of the blossoms are well felted into the background. Uh, and I'll be back shortly and show you the finished product. Okay, we're back. I have embellished the gray shawl with black locks, and this is very fine. It's about 17 micron, um, the black, and it should nicely felt right into the gray base. So I'm gonna run it through once so you can see how quickly it will go into the, um, the base, and then I will continue running it and then I'll come back with the finished product. So we'll start on this now and because it's thick enough it doesn't need the carrying cloth this time. It'll be okay. Just push it to get it started in. Once a few inches have gone through then it'll be working on its own okay. Whoop. It's getting a bit of a needle pattern. It's going through slower than I would have liked. So I'll have to make sure the rest of it goes through slowly. You see the needle marks? Most of that will wash out.
Okay, so there it is. I'm going through the machine once and you can see it's all attached. Now, if I wanted to change something, I could pull this off, but it's attached enough now that I don't have to worry about any of it being moved around when it goes through the machine. So if I like the pattern, then I'm ready to run it through several more times and I'll show you the finished product later. Okay, we're back with the gray with the cherry blossom. It took six runs through the felt loom to make sure it was all um, well felted. I run most of the projects through upside down at least once just to help interlock, but you don't want to do it too often because you don't want the base color coming through. So if you run it through too many times, you're going to have bits of gray coming through. So this is all ready now. I will, I don't do a full wet felt, but I just scrub it a little bit um, with some warm water and soap. And then I put it in the washing machine on hand wash and it'll be ready for pressing. And we will be done with this one. The other shawl came out nice. So again, I turned it over. This one I ran it through upside down twice because it, if the gray comes through, that's fine. It won't affect the, the pattern. And this one, I think it went through five times and it, it's ready to be wet felted and then washed in the machine as well. And then it'll be finished. Every time I run the shawls through or anything through, I change direction. So one time it would go through on this angle and then the next time it would go through like this and keep rotating it and then that helps prevent the track marks from the the needles going up and down in it okay so i will be back with the finished product in just a minute we're back with the two finished shawls i took both of them and gave them a quick wet felting with lots of soap and then I put them into the washing machine on hand wash cycle and they were both washed, hung to dry, and then finally they were pressed. And I leave all of the edges pretty much ragged. I like the more natural look. I can do them straight edge if people prefer that. So this is the first one, the gray with the black bits just pulled through it. Gray and black go with just about everything. I'm pleased with the way this one turned out. The second shawl is the pink one, gray with the pink cherry blossoms. There's just a little bit of pink, and then when the collar's there, the gray. And then there's the back, the cherry blossom tree all finished. And again, it's all just raw edges, but it can be cut and made straight if that's what people would like. If you have any questions about the wet felting and needle felting process, um, just let us know. You can contact me at Lazen Alpaca. Thank you.